so friends in our last video we discussed how corn contains a unique set of phytochemicals such as phenolic acids flavonoids fiber resistant starches and a variety of minerals and a plenty of different vitamins and how corn's anthocyanidins can protect you from age related macular degeneration the number one cause of permanent blindness in western world and lutein and zeaxanthin can protect you from retinal damage and dementia corn's benefits don't stop there let's find out how nature's inexpensive corn may be to your fancy and expensive probiotic pills in health benefits but i hear you saying corn has starches starches will make me fat i am scared i understand that there is a widespread confusion about the effects of starches let the refreshing breeze of knowledge and the illuminating rays of clarity penetrate the dense fog of confusion the classic mistake made by scientists and proponents of low carb camp is that they observe the harms of refined and processed carbohydrates including simple carbohydrates like table sugar soda croissants muffins donuts bagels chips and other packaged junk and mistakenly assume that all carbohydrates are bad they become so entrenched in their ignorance that they disregard the consistent scientific finding that the longest living people on earth without health problems primarily consume carbohydrates and starch based diets sourced from whole food plant based diet with minimal unprocessed animal products i agree processed carbohydrates are evil just like more than minimum intake of saturated fat and cholesterol rich animal foods let's delve deeper into the understanding of starches we all know that starches are carbohydrates derived from plants and they exist in two forms amylose and amylopectin unlike amylopectin amylose is a resistant starch study after study demonstrates that resistant starches can significantly enhance and fortify the immune system improve digestion and waste disposal functions lower cholesterol and enhance digestion how does it achieve these benefits as the name suggests resistant starches are somewhat resistant to our digestive enzymes consequently a significant portion of corn's resistant starch amylose reaches the colon where our beneficial bacteria fermented what's the outcome wonderful compounds like short chain fatty acids propionates butyrates acetates which offer a wide range of benefits these short chain fatty acids nourish the cells lining our colon help maintain the integrity of our gut barrier preventing leaky gut reducing the risk of colon cancer it also slow down our stomach emptying leading to prolonged feeling of fullness and even affect our appetite centers in the brain signaling satiety and aiding in maintaining a healthy weight are you keeping up with me excellent on a side note do you want to know what our colon bacteria produce when we consume eggs meat or seafood cleveland clinic tells us tmao which has been linked to elevated risk of stroke and heart attack independent of artery clogging effects of cholesterol and saturated fat so here you go now 
getting back to the topic you may have heard about probiotics but let me ask you if you know about prebiotic and postbiotics allow me to burst the probiotic bubble my friends there isn't much evidence supporting the widespread use of probiotic supplements except in very specific cases such as after antibiotic use in fact probiotics have caused deaths in patient with pancreatitis and can contribute to antibiotic resistance and infections in immunosuppressed individuals it is also crucial to note that probiotic pills and powders are part of supplement industry which remains unregulated and are not monitored by the FDA often these products lack the claimed ingredients or bacteria even if these bacteria are present within the capsules they are frequently dead making them useless to say the least perhaps you took extra measures to ensure the best quality and viable probiotics but still these bacteria will simply pass through your colon and you will just flush an expansive poop how can i make such a claim because not only do bacteria starve in our colon but also we keep a hostile environment for bacteria how we unknowingly but actively try to kill them through antibiotics artificial sweeteners and other toxins and chemicals you may not have taken antibiotics recently but know this approximately 70% of all medically important antibiotics in united states are sold for use in animals so no wonder most animal products such as chicken meat dairy products are laden with significant antibiotics this is the primary reason for the lack of bacterial diversity in people's colon now understand this bacteria feed on fiber resistant starches and other residual plant compounds all of which are found in one place whole plant foods unfortunately americans do not consume enough of these foods it may surprise you my friends that 97% of americans fail to meet the bare minimum requirement of 30 grams of fiber per day please share your fiber intake and diet in the comment section now fiber and resistant starches lead us to the next point prebiotics because prebiotic is just another name for fiber resistant starches and other non digestible plant compounds so your money will be much better spent on prebiotics and bacteria will thrive in your colon feeding on prebiotics from colorful plants so is it clear now that prebiotics are the prerequisite of healthy bacteria in our colon great now having knowledge of prebiotics let's move on to postbiotics postbiotics are the amazing compounds produced by our bacteria when they feast on prebiotics in our colon or put another way postbiotics are the poop pee sweat and spit of our healthy bacteria in our colon sounds gross right are you ready to know what mouth watering products are these bacterial poop pee and sweats here we go vitamin b12 vitamin k folate amino acids enzymes and those fantastic short chain fatty acids butyrates propionates acetates we just talked above 
and many more wonderful compounds. Not so bad, huh? If I have not grossed you out too much, then hear this. These trillions of bacteria live in harmony with our body and they have intricate knowledge of our complex system and they even talk with different organs and control them to some degree. Interesting, huh? So, if these bacteria controls our body, so do we have any control over these bacteria? Yes! But how? By choosing what we eat. What we eat decides what type of bacteria we have in our colon. Whole food plant-based diet will support healthier bacteria and fiber devoid foods like meat, chicken, eggs, dairy and processed foods like bagel, white bread chips will promote the bad bacteria in your colon. My patients save their money and ignore the popular trend of probiotics and instead support their gut bacteria with a variety of colorful plants. Eat your rainbow. Now, let's bring our focus back to corn. Among all the common grains, corn boasts the highest content of amylose, which you remember is a resistant starch or a prebiotic or food for healthy bacteria. Despite these numerous health benefits, the average consumption of whole grains, including corn, in United States is inadequate. USDA recommends that we consume more than 170 grams of whole grains daily. And I recommend to my patients that all of which should be in the form of whole intact grains. But less than 10% of Americans are eating recommended amount of whole grain. Even if you include floured whole grains, which are inferior in quality than whole intact grains, Americans prefer refined grains. Why? Refined grains have an addictive quality, just like any processed food. Duh! Remember, every small step towards a healthier lifestyle count. Please share your journey and inspire those around you. Together, we can create a community of positive change and unlock our full health potential. Thank you for joining me today. And always remember that popcorn can be a green light food when enjoyed mindfully and as a part of balanced whole food plant-based diet. Until next time, please take care of yourself and your loved ones. Stay blessed. Namaste. Adios. Zaizan. Khuda Hafiz. Alvida.